All right, welcome to today's tutorial. We're going to learn how to showcase um, a completed model using a path and a camera. So here's what um, it should look like. Zooms in and then zooms out like that. So it starts far away, comes in closer, rotates around the object, and then zooms away like that. All right. Um, so here's what our scene's going to look like. Um, but we're going to start with our modest cube here. So the first thing we want to do is turn this into more of a pedestal. Um, oh, I'm going to turn on my sc uh, screencast. There we go. Um, so press tab to go into edit mode with the cube selected and then choose uh, face select and we'll right click on the top of this cube and left click on the blue arrow and just uh, drag that up a little bit so it looks like more of a stand and then we'll press tab to go out of edit mode. Now we want to add our um, face here so I'm going to press shift A to add a new mesh and then we'll choose the monkey and it came in down here so we'll left click on the blue arrow drag it up to the top. It looks a little big so I'm going to press S to scale it down a little bit and then three on the number pad and five to go to the 2D uh, view and I'm just going to rotate it so that it lies uh, flat on the top of the pedestal using R and then X to constrain it to the X axis something like that and then I'll left click on the blue arrow again and bring it down so it's sitting on the top of the pedestal like that. Okay, um, looks pretty good. Uh, now what I want to do is just give it a little bit of a material so that it shows up in our rendering. So with it selected, we'll click on the material pane, new to add new material. Uh, we're going to switch to cycles render and click use nodes and diffuse is fine we'll choose uh, this color maybe like a brown brownish color something like that um, and then if we want I'm gonna press 0 just to make sure my camera is focused on it so my camera is not focused on uh, it so I'm gonna press N to open up my properties window and then I'm going to select lock camera to view which allows me to actually move the camera um, from inside the viewport which is very helpful so I'm going to press down my middle mouse button and then rotate it up a little bit and then I'm going to hold shift and then press the middle mouse button to bring up the shot a little bit so now we can just get some sense of what it looks like um, right now we wouldn't expect it to look like much because we don't have any light sources in the scene, but it looks fine. The brown color is good. Uh, so now I'm going to press escape. Uh, now what we're going to do is add a light source. Um, to do that, um, we're going to add just a circle that will emit light up here. Um, we're not going to use this. So I right clicked on it to select it and then I hit X and then chose delete. And now I'm going to shift A to add our circle. It came in down here. I'm just going to bring it up um, a good amount so that it doesn't get doesn't show up in the scene. And um, I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and then F and that fills in. It, the F stands for face. So I made a, a face inside here. And uh, tab to go back into object mode. We'll go and adjust its material. We'll add a new material and we're going to select emission and give it a strength of maybe we'll start with a hundred and see if it's how it looks. So um, now we can render it and see how the lighting looks. Okay, looks pretty good. Um, the quality is really low because um, on the red render pane 
uh, under sampling, I just have it set at 10 um, so that it renders quickly. So uh, I, think, I think I'm all set for now in terms of the general scene. Um, and what I'm going to do now is set up my starting point where I want my camera to start. Maybe right here. And then I'm going to have it zoom in and rotate around uh, the face. So once it looks something like this, I'm pressing 1 to go into front view. Um, what we're going to do now is add a path that we can then use to show where we want the camera to go uh, around this uh, model. So shift A, we're going to add a curve and then path. And it showed up right here. I'm going to increase the radius of this uh, because I know I want it to be pretty long. So I'm going to enter 10, which is a good starting point, and then we can modify it later if we need to. Um, so now I'm going to go into top view and I'm going to start playing around with it a little bit. Um, I'm going to move it here and then press R for rotate and then Z to constrain it to the Z axis and something like that. Move it up and over. Zooming out with the middle mouse wheel. So that the start of the path is lined up pretty well with the camera here. Obviously it's not the same height, but that's okay for now. We can, if we want, we can bring it up a little bit so that it's more in the realm of possibility. Now I just noticed that I've got my path. You can see these little arrows. They're going the wrong way. They should be going away from the camera. So I'm going to go back to top view, zoom out a little bit, and then I'm going to hit R to rotate, Z to constrain it to the Z axis, and then type 180, and then enter. And what that should have done, if I press tab to go into edit mode, they're now going in the right direction. Okay. Um, it also looks like it's angled up a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that right now, since we'll adjust the height later. Um, so this is a good starting point. We're going to go back to top view and start modifying uh, the different points along the path. So we're in edit mode now. Um, and what we need to do is start moving around these individual nodes here. So the first one, something like this. And then let's see, where's our second one here? We'll move this down a bit. And then I'm going to select both of these and bring them down a little bit so we can work with them more easily. Okay, so this one's looking fine. And then we'll right click on this one, bring it down, something like that. Okay, um, holding shift and then middle mouse button to pan my screen. Now we're gonna do is just complete our path here so it comes back towards the camera. So I'm gonna use E to extrude, um, bring another point here, E again to extrude, left clicking to set it, and then E, 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 and back towards where we started. Okay, so now we've got this path that's going around the model. Um, it starts at the camera and uh, we want it to drop in height a little bit as well. So what I'm going to do is press A to select the whole piece and drag the whole piece down a little bit using 1 to see what my actual height is. So that looks good. And now what I'm going to do is just bring up, um, press A to deselect and just bring up this starting point up to near where the camera is. Like that. So it'll come down and then 
go around our monkey. Um, it looks like we're also starting a little bit close. Let's see what it looks like from the camera's perspective. Yeah, we're a little too close. Um, so we're going to come out and just move this piece a little bit further away so it can come in a little bit. And we'll, we'll press tab to go out of the path edit and then uh, do the same thing with the camera. Let's switch to top view so we know what we're doing. There we go. Let's see how the camera looks now. Um, that's a little better. Um, I'm going to change the rotation here a little bit and zoom out just a little bit more and then we'll move the path to where we are. Okay, so now our camera is way back out here. Um, we'll get back to our path and what I'm going to do is add another point here. So extrude and then bring it this way. Let's see where the point actually is. Okay, so bring it this way under the camera and then we'll look at front view and bring it up. So that that looks better. Um, so now we want to do, now that our view camera view looks good and our other views look good, is our path is done. Um, so we can press tab and we're going to right click on the camera and then right click on the path and hit control P and choose follow path. And that's all we really need to do. Now when you hit play on your timeline down here, the camera follows the path. But you'll notice that the camera maintains its orientation along the path. And it also goes pretty quickly. Um, through it, you can actually follow along in here and you can see that it <laughs> follows along the path. Uh, so what we want to do is make sure that the camera only looks at the model here. So we'll right, uh, right click on the camera and then hold shift and right click on the model to select both of them. And this time we'll press control T and we'll choose damped track constraint. And you'll see there's this dotted line that appears between the camera and uh, our model. Now when we hit play, you'll see that it follows the model as it rotates around. Um, so let's see how it looks now um, from the perspective of the oops of the camera. So it zooms in, it goes around, and then it zooms out. It looks like there might might have been some weird rotation happening. Yeah, I have no idea what's causing that. Um, may have to do with something, something to do with this point here. And this point here. There we go. Um, Whoa. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just leave it like that. If someone can figure out what, why it's doing that, please let me know. Okay, so now we're rotating around, and then it, it ends like this. Okay, good. So we're almost done. I think it's going, the only thing to change is it's going a little bit fast. Um, so what we're gonna do now um, let's say we want it to complete the whole path in 250 frames. It's now doing it in much less. So I'm going to press tab to go out of the path, but um, with the path selected, we can click on the path tab and change the frames this for the path animation to 250 and then hit enter. And now you'll see that it follows this path much more slowly, giving a better tour of the actual model. All right, 
Um, so the last last step now is to set up our animation settings. Um, so we'll move this to the first frame. Not it may not matter. Um, and you'll want to select your output folder. Um, click on here. I'm going to choose Blender Projects and uh, accept. And I'm also going to ch choose my, my output um, for a movie. Um, go with QuickTime. You can choose whatever you like. And sampling. Um, if you want it to be higher quality, choose um, a higher number for render. Um, just keep in mind that a uh, higher number is going to take much longer to render. So uh, if you choose 100 samples here, it'll take maybe 10 times as long to render. Uh, and then once that's set, so let's go with maybe 100, um, we can just come up here and click Animation. And that will basically, scene by scene, it will render. Um, and by the end, We'll wait just a moment while it goes through a couple scenes. So let's, it's going obviously pretty slowly, so we're just going to take a pause here. So I pressed escape to stop the animation, and when it's done, you can click up here on render, and then play rendered animation. So it pops up, it looks ridiculous because we only recorded um, one frame. Uh, but that's how you can view your animation, and you can also find it, of course, at the location that you chose for the output. All right, uh, so I hope that was useful. Um, your actual one should look a little bit more like this. Um, and you can actually move all kinds of things along those paths, um, whether it's an object or a camera. All right, hope this was useful, and I'll see you next time.